Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to show you guys how to solve parallelograms using the cosine law. Um, now before I jump into these uh, examples, I've got two examples I want to do. Uh, just a quick review of some parallel line rules. If you've got two parallel lines and you have a transversal, which is a line across the parallel line, then you know that your obtuse angles, this angle and this angle and this angle and this angle are the same and you know that your acute angles, this angle and this angle and this angle and this angle are the same. And if we extend that with a second parallel line, well then that means that like all of the obtuse angles everywhere and all of the acute angles everywhere are the same in this diagram. And why is this relevant to a parallelogram? Well that inside shape, this shape right here, is a parallelogram. And so what that means is our pink angle and our green angle, right, our obtuse angle and our acute angle, they meet in a straight line. So that means that these two angles here, right, this pink angle plus the green angle add up to 180 degrees. And so this means that the two angles in a parallelogram are supplementary. It means that you subtract them to get 180 degrees, or from 180 degrees to get the other. So we're going to need this to solve this problem. So uh, that is background. Let's jump in and see how we can solve this question with the cosine law. So let's read this question. Determine the shorter diagonal length of a parallelogram with sides 5, 9, and obtuse angle 120 degrees. So I guess one other thing is in terms of diagonal, um, a parallelogram, if you think of a parallelogram, there's two diagonals in a parallelogram. There's this diagonal going this way right from those two points, and then there's another diagonal going the other way, and it should be pretty clear just looking at those that one of those is shorter than the other. Right, The one that connects the two obtuse angles, the bigger angles, is always going to be shorter than the one connecting your pair of acute angles. So let's uh, let's draw our diagram. Uh, so 5 and 9, so let's draw I don't know, something like this. 120 degrees looks about that-ish. So our obtuse angles are both 120 degrees. Our long sides are both 9, and our short sides are both 5. And we are trying to find the shorter diagonal, let's call that x, I guess. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to figure out our acute angles. Our acute angles we know from you know this business we did over here. Our acute angles uh, add up to 180 degrees. So our angle up here is 180 degrees minus the 120 degrees we have, which is 60 degrees. And this means that we actually have a triangle. A triangle with 60 degrees, two sides uh, we know. So the 60 degrees is sandwiched between 5 and 9, and we're trying to find the opposite side. If that's not clear to you, I'll redraw it down here. So we have 60 degrees, 5 and 9, that's 60, not 66. Forgive my writing. And we are trying to find the side down here. This is cosine law. You've got an angle sandwiched between two sides. So this means that um, x, x squared equals our other two sides. Uh, I guess I'll do 5 first. 5 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 5 times 9 times cos of our angle, which is 60 degrees. OK, time to pull up my calculator. Uh, I guess I'll move this over here. Okay, so um, x squared is 5 squared plus 9 squared minus uh, nope, 2 times 5 times 9 times cos 60, which is, uh, just double check, as a note, um, I already know that I'm in degrees mode, but if you're not sure, make sure you're in degrees mode before you do this. Okay, so uh, 5 times uh, 61, so x squared is 61, 61, so then x is, uh, we need to square root, so x is uh, second square root, second answer, 7.8 to the nearest tenth, 7.8. Okay, so that's one way you can set up the parallelogram question, where you know an angle and you're trying to find one of the diagonals. Um, if you're trying to find the other diagonal, it would be basically the same thing, except you'd use the 120 degrees, right? If we were trying to find this, this pink diagonal here, 
then you'd use this angle and these two sides, which basically works out to the same thing, the exact same formula except 120 degrees even. The other way you can set it up is you can know um, two sides and a diagonal, and you could be asked to find one of or both of your angles. So let's do that one as well. Um, I've given the shorter diagonal, because um, why not? It could be the longer diagonal, it doesn't really matter. Let's set up our diagram with these numbers. And I don't know if this is to scale, but it doesn't really matter if it's to scale or not. 10, 15, which means this is 10 and this is also 15. Um, sorry, I didn't read the question. Determine all angles in a parallelogram with sides 10, 15, and a shorter diagonal length of 11. So this shorter diagonal down the middle, I guess I'll do a dotted line, is 11. So hopefully clearly you see that this triangle here, or the other triangle underneath, doesn't really matter. We know all three sides. Now I suppose I could find this angle here, or I could find this angle here, but neither of those are angles in our parallelogram, so let's not. Let's go right to finding this angle here. I did x last time, so I guess let's do y. Let's mix it up, why not? So now we need to use cosine law because we know all three sides in the triangle. So our opposite side is 11, and our adjacent two sides are 10 and 15. So we are going to have cos of y equals um, our sh one of our two short sides squared plus the other short side squared minus the opposite side squared all over two times the two short sides. Okay, so I'm doing this cosine law stuff pretty quickly. Um, I've got another video where you can look at how to do cosine law if you weren't sure, but this is the idea for this question. Um, so then y is going to be cos inverse of like all that stuff. I'm too lazy to write it out. Let's just jump right to it. So we are going to do second cosine of, uh, now, when you're plugging this into your calculator, you need to be careful, right? Remember there's sort of implied brackets around your numerator and implied brackets around your denominator. So we are going to do bracket for our numerator, 10 squared plus 15 squared minus 11 squared, close bracket divided by open bracket, 2 times 10 times 15 close bracket, and then close bracket again for the cos inverse. So I've done that all in one step because I put the cos inverse in front. Um, you can do it in two steps if you like. This gives me that y is 47 degrees. And if y is 47 degrees, then our missing angle here is just going to be 180 degrees minus 47 degrees is 133 degrees. So our two angles in our triangle are, I can almost call that Z, I guess, 47 degrees and 133 degrees.